What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 144. My name is Zach Graham, your host here in the North End, joined, as always, by my good buddy. He's on record as my best friend. His name is Ian Misho, and we call him E E E E E. He's sitting here on Sunday. Beautiful, awesome, Texas, a uh, little Pharaoh Monch playing us in there today. Ah. You know, the, the vibes with that at halftime lately we have been immaculate, especially with the uh, Godzilla Armadillo video <laughs> that they put out there last night. I know the answer to this, but I'll ask you as I always do. How are you feeling, my friend? I am feeling quite well. Thank you, sir. Um <laughs> I mean, uh, this team just finds new ways to make me fall in love with them more and more. And this game last night was absolutely incredible. What a match that we were able to be a part of there at the queue. Um, Like we were talking about before we jumped on here, probably enjoyable for everyone, even an impartial viewer outside of SKC fans there, which another (laughs) tough loss for them on the books. Uh, I was surprised with their showing with how many people they had there uh, up there in their little whatever we call that zone we need a name for that zone yeah like, i mean the, opposing supporters for now we, we we'll workshop it yeah we got to get something <laughs> there but it's like man, four rows of those guys though that, yeah one bad yeah they're pretty solid and they got that first goal we're allowed but man it's just i i don't know how you can't be feeling 2022 vibes here like this is just a season <laughs> that has been filled with all kinds of incredible comebacks and just resilient type of efforts to get points get really gritty points and this is just a classic case of that, man. I really love this team right now. Yeah, the stretch that they're on definitely gives the 2022 vibes in terms of results. Mm-hmm. I think it's it. Would you agree if I said like the the product is completely different though? Like the way they're winning these games, more mm-hmm. defensive, right? Like it's mm-hmm. it's. But I think it's just the unexpected nature, right? It, exceeding everybody's expectations, and now. You can say, uh, at least for a week, that they are way above even what our buddy Primo had them preseason. Uh, Austin FC sitting in third place in the West as the first double game week of the season comes to a close. Let's go ahead and just jump into this one uh, because we will talk about, of course, recapping this match from Saturday night. Uh, We will also talk last business day and FCTO's game that they had Friday night at the pitch. Uh, and in between those, uh, we mentioned on Thursday's episode, <laughs> still, man, what a whirlwind of a week on Thursday's episode, uh, mentioned that those uh, salaries came out from the Players Association. So we'll definitely do a little bit deeper of a dive here today. But before we jump in any further into this evening's episode, just want to remind you, if you have not yet, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. It helps us grow the sh- grow the show. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. It does the same for us on YouTube. You can hit the notification bell on YouTube to know when a live stream pops up or a new episode goes live. And of course, on this episode, hit that like button, push the thumbs up, help us battle those YouTube algorithm overlords, atone for your sins, wash yourselves clean in the secondhand confetti of the North End. Uh, And while you're here, look, you may have done all of that for us already. The next thing you can do, Tell a friend. You got Austin FC friends. They're looking to expand their content rotation. Recommend the North End Podcast. Any and all of that you could do for us, we would greatly appreciate it. E, coming in mm. last night, uh, we had no real surprises on the injury report. We did get a Friday morning media availability where Coach Wolf said Biru and Finley would be listed questionable once again. Uh, that came to pass when the official availability report came out Friday evening. Nobody else on the injury report, no surprises there. And then the lineup comes out, minimal rotation here. Did get some, right? You see Rigoni go to the bench, Owen Wolf in his place out there on the wing. Opposite Hotter Obreon, the birthday boy, 
Mm. And then you do see uh, Johan Valencia in there for Alex Ring. Uh, both of those guys were on the bench where Ethan Finley was active. Guillermo Biru was not. And the rest of that bench, Cleveland, Jimenez, Vicenin, Hedges, uh, Fodre, and Zardes alongside Ring, Rigoni, and Finley. What were your thoughts on the lineup, uh, at least headed in? Totally fine with it. Uh, I know that we're going to see some rotation. We needed it. I was listening to a, a little Moon Tower earlier, and they talked about when you're winning, you can afford to have some rotation. When you're not, it's a little harder to do. I know we're still limited with what we have available to us, but we're going to need some time off for sure. Um, we had a fresh fresh leg with Owen just from the amount of time that he's been getting over the last couple of weeks here. And then um, I just blanked on the last sub there. Who was it? Um, Johan. Yes, correct. Yo, Johan for Alex. Uh, again, the amount of work that Alex has been put in this season has been fantastic. Having Johan as an available option there to come in and provide that you know sound defense that he is known for is is a great is a great problem for us to have right now. And um, I'm, I'm excited to get into this and like talk about how we got Danny pushed up the field and how excellent he looked in that capacity as well. So totally good with the lineup. Uh, definitely want some more information on Guillerme how he's feeling, how he's doing, how he's progressing. Uh, but I thought a very solid uh, shift from Komenich as well. So didn't get too much of a drop off there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and just going right into it here in the first minute, not a ton of negative notes here in mm -hmm. the in the episode rundown, Eve, but right off the bat, Brennan Heinzeich kind of loose with the juice here near midfield. Johnny Russell pounces on the loose ball. Uh, Heinzeich and Stuber able to usher this out for a goal kick, but third straight game with a giveaway at the back in the first couple minutes of the match. All three matches in the last eight days had one yeah. of those. And like I said to you, trying to turn it into a positive in the stands, opposing teams only one for three on those breakaways, so not terrible, but uh, nervy moments to start. And uh, Heinzeich luckily was able to continue on. He was rubbing his knee, looked like he may have kind of jammed mm. it there, reaching out. Uh, but yeah, it was just worrisome uh you know pretty much as soon as we sat down once again this is a trend that we definitely do not want to see pick up um yeah. because eventually more often than not even though they're only one for three in these breakaways it will catch up to you and it burned us in the dallas game and uh, you just don't want to see that with the way that this team is playing and the fact that even in that dallas game we were the better team for the majority of that game so those little types of mistakes just nip them in the butt you know and it's something that we haven't seen all season up until these last three matches here so i don't think it's going to be something that we see continue particularly with the fact that we're not playing particularly out of that back horseshoe mm. as much as we have been in the past which obviously takes away some of the opportunities for mistakes like that to happen but um glad we got away with it glad, glad that uh hindsight was okay there didn't have anything too serious fifth minute Austin indeed playing out of the back in this instance. Uh, but right here, Stuver hits Danny in between two SKC defenders. Stuver a couple times last night looked like he was having a little bit of fun messing with some mm -hmm. of those, uh, you know, SKC attackers that were pressing a little bit high, uh, kind of throwing a couple pump fakes at him, moving the defense. Danny turns when he receives this pass. He plays John Gallagher ahead down the right side. He takes a touch and then pushes it forward onto Hotter Obreon. And OB crosses it towards the top of the area, finds Owen Wolf. I thought nice little touch by Owen to lay it off for Diego. Diego's touch is a bit heavy there, but that ball just kind of dribbles right to the feet of Driussi. And he pirouettes around, slides it to Kolmanich in behind. John gets to the byline, pulls it back across the face of goal. It squeaks through the scrum there and finds Danny, who bangs it home for the opening goal. Place goes crazy. Um then it goes to VAR and uh, it ended up being called back offside was Obreon on the initial pass from Johnny G. Uh, so tough break there. I do think if we had uh, all of the camera angles that you and I desire in these MLS stadiums, I do think he probably ends up a scotch offside. Um, but it is tough to prove from the angles that they had, which again, are not great when they're spaced out like 30 yards apart as they are. Um, but man, yeah, it was just such a, it was a letdown because the, the stadium, I mean, it felt like the party was about to be on, like mm -hmm. we're going to blow these guys out here. Um, but not to be at least at that point. 
Yeah. All right. Let's start with, you know, what we controlled in that situation there. I thought that the play from side to side, this change of field was fantastic. I thought you saw multiple guys there as you were breaking that down, have some really nice touches, some smart plays, some anticipatory passes that set this up. I still am a bit perplexed on this offsides call. Like I know he is initially offsides. Um, he somewhat reestablishes himself back on sides. This ball, I don't know if he interrupts this play or is even part of this play because he falls down here, you know, and it's just like I it was for me, if it had been ruled offsides on the field, that is one thing. But it didn't look like that was the case to me. And then to go back and then overturn this, I just didn't think was was the right call. And um, again, let's move to a portion that we can control here, you know, with these two matchups that we've had before this game, the rivalry aspect, the the emotional highs, the emotional lows from the Dallas game. To be able to come out here and set the tone, get that goal early, man, it was just an, a, another huge emotional wave, tons of momentum for this team that could have really carried us to what you said, like a, a blowout where we run this team off the field. Um, and then to be able to bounce back from that, and um, particularly Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Pepe here. <laughs> uh, it's particularly uh, Pep there, man. Like, you know, we, we've we've chatted about some of his maturity things. Some of the times where he allows his cool uh, to be lost in certain situations. And this was a perfect example of him moving past that and having arguably, I mean, can you name on, you know, off the top of your head, two games that he's been looked better. Like it, it was, it was one of his best performances in, in yeah. an Austin FC Jersey. In my opinion, he was all over the field. His decision-making was just so crisp and fast and like he was turning and making plays multiple times in this game he gets balls in intricate tight delicate situations and he's able to make a bang bang kind of move as we get into the goals that come here later so just couldn't be more proud of him especially playing out of his technical position and a spot that we saw him again struggle with early on and now Again, it talks to about like his maturity levels here. You know, this is something that he was not doing very well. That's something we recall where it was like, hey, we need to get him back because this is yeah. not what we need to be seeing right now. But for him to come out here in this game with that rotation, no Alex who has been in a more advanced position as of late was just incredible, man. And just a, a, a testament to Danny, man. I just I really can't even say enough good things about him in this game. And I know I'm going to say some more very yeah, positive yeah. things about him as we go go through this. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm totally with you. Um, and again, to 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 what you said about like what we've seen in the past of him when he's playing further up the field, like I think one of the big differences, and again, just in my opinion here, was that he didn't try to do too much, and I think that may have been something that's held him back in those prior opportunities playing further up the field. Um, he just kind of did his job, right? He was. Mm -hmm. I I felt like there were multiple times on the rewatch where I'm like man, he's checking back, finding space and like being, becoming that outlet for Johan when Yo, Joe is sitting in between the two center backs, things like that. Like you said, maneuvering in tight spaces. He's great at that no matter where he is yeah. on the pitch, right? But not trying to do too much, right? Not trying to play hero ball. And I think it helps to have our actual hero on the yeah. pitch next to him. Yes. This I think is the first time that I remember seeing Danny be able to play the eight while Seba is also up there with him. Um, yes. And right, it's I say the eight. Josh calls it dual tens. I think usually is their terminology for for Seba and X. Mm -hmm. And last night it was Danny in there for Alex Ring. Um, yeah, he. It's awesome, man. It's it's something that like if he can build on that. Yeah, we don't even need him to be that good in the position for that to be a great thing for the team moving forward. Although I will take it if that's not a ceiling game. Like if that becomes a new right. norm, we'll certainly live with it. Um, and I mean, we've seen so many of these opportunities come to Alex in those types of situations. So it's definitely a position that we are going to find opportunities for you to really impact the game. And I like that you brought up that he was still able to be that great connector that we have seen him be in the past, even from a more advanced position and to get that ball off Jojo's foot and to be able to get it to Danny. And now we're turning and we're going. That's just a whole new element to our game. So you love to see that. Well, I mistakenly skipped over the note that I had here uh, before we got into the minutes. The AAPI Heritage Month TIFO oh, was yes. sick. Awesome. I, they always do such cool shit, man. I know, it's, but like it's, it's just I, impressive. Yeah. Not I yet. go in like knowing that it's going to be cool, and then I actually see the thing up there, and uh, 
man, the, the way the light was coming through uh, that, that uh, Northwest corner of the stadium near kickoff, it was some very picturesque uh, postcards out there on, on social media this morning, both from fans and the team. Back into the game here, ninth minute, Austin pressuring high, uh, which I think they did a little bit more of last night. It looked like we went to back to the 4-4-2 defensive shape. Um, and I'm not sure if that was game plan in terms of we want to press them higher more or it was how they lined up skc that is and we made that adjustment on the fly either way um it certainly it certainly worked out for us especially here in the first half on on this play uh won the ball near midfield seba clips a ball in and finds the head of obrian near the spot and uh, obi we've seen him you know put some of these headed chances off target this one right to the center of net but also right to the center of tim melia's chest here um but again, first 10 minutes, Austin's certainly the aggressor. Absolutely. And to the to your point about that high press there, like we are finding ways to add wrinkles to our game while still remaining true to our main type of principles here, which is still being stout and sound defensively, tracking back consistently, and having good clean possession. And I thought you saw that a lot here. And I, I, I also can't talk to why this was implemented or did something trigger it. Was it because we we're a bit rotated and now we have Danny up there, which does provide a bit more mm. of a pressure point than Alex because of obviously the speed difference. But whatever the reasoning was, it was the right call. 19th minute here. Uh, Memo Rodriguez, who I thought was very good, uh, was both good. live and on the rewatch. Uh, he plays a cheeky ball over the top here to Alan Polito in behind. Polito gets slowed up by multiple Austin defenders, but Johnny Russell – is crashing the area. Polito lays it off to him. He takes a shot. And that shot gets deflected by Brendan Heinzeich and sneaks inside that near post for the opening goal. I think on the replay, Brad probably saves that if there is no deflection, I agree. Uh, which is just the give and take of, of the game, right? Because Brendan's doing his job trying to get that block in there and he gets the slight deflection, but it, it throws everything off there for brad they do check this one for offside on the initial pass and i think on the replay he's kept onside by john gallagher ah Polito, that is i agree onside uh you know and after this first goal like i was i was anticipating going to this rewatch and gonna be able to try to find something that went wrong here in regard to how we tried to defend this but russell's just coming down with a full head of steam and he's coming out of nowhere and heinz like is backtracking and still you can't close that gap in enough time to be able to you know, limit him in his opportunities there. So just a bad bounce there. And um, with how the game started in that game, the, the goal being called back from Danny, I was like, man, this is, this is now, uh, you know, I felt almost in like crisis mode here because it was like such a large swing yeah. in the momentum of this game, because now we've had the air taken out of that place twice, but man, shout out to the supporter section for just being, incredible just like always bringing the juice always bringing the vibes and like i know that that's been a, a talking point for some people about like toning it down after we get scored on or whatever but i don't want to hear those skc fans chanting and stuff like i yeah, want to yeah. hear us i want to be singing along and like you know blocking that out as best as i can so uh tough break here for brad but i do agree he would have saved this ball if it had not been deflected yeah but austin i mean comes back fairly quickly yep. uh, in terms of being the aggressor. They did not, again, this is a, to quote my, our buddy Thomas, uh, you know, your Lakers brethren. He told me, uh, I think it was Wednesday. He said, man, this uh, Austin team reminds me of the 2023 Pittsburgh Steelers. And I was like, what, bro? We didn't, the Steelers didn't make the playoffs. And he goes, no, just the resiliency, right? Yeah. And uh, I do agree there. And obviously we've talked about the differences with this team, just the, the mental game is on a completely different level from 2023. Um, Absolutely. And we, we pontificated about that in the stands in regard to like Roto's impact potentially on how he's being able to like have these players be more connected with Josh and more bought into what we're trying to do because he provides a voice where it's somebody who like, look at these accomplishments that I have, yeah. you know, like I can show you the right way to go. So I think that that is just a huge element to the amount of resiliency you're seeing from this team, the continuity, the connectivity to be able to be like, look, we're still going to do our thing. And as long as we do our thing for the majority of this game, more often than not, up until this point, 
we're going to yeah. be able to get some sort of favorable results. So again, just uh, hats off to the boys for being able to fight back from from a very interesting and and difficult start to this game. Twenty second minute, uh, Julio Cascante picks up a yellow for running through Basong. It looked like he was trying to go in there with the shoulder to shoulder. Basong does a good job to get his body in front of the oncoming challenge. Definitely a uh, uh, deserved yellow. Mm -hmm. in my eyes and julio now back on yellow card accumulation caution um because remember you get that first suspension at your fifth yellow card and then every time after that it's three so he just picked up two in the last two matches so uh potentially going to be missing julio cascante again soon mm. um off that free kick eric tommy gets free or I would say a free shot really at the top of the box, not a ton of defenders around him, but he launches this one, a lot of velocity behind this shot, which is a theme from Tommy on the night. Uh, but Heinz Eich here able to get his head down, nod it up over the bar and into section 123 near us. Um, man, putting my noggin in front of a ball like that, <laughs> there's a, it's a braver man than me. Yeah. Uh, again, man, he is just willing to throw his body into the line of fire to be able to get some shots not going towards Brad Stuber. And this is just another classic example of that here. And he's just been, and he's been great. He's been so yeah. good. 26 minute here. Uh, Austin back on the front foot. A good change by Johan from right to left here. Owen, Seba, and Jean Kolmanich combine. Ultimately, Jean finds Driussi cutting inside the box and Seba fires a shot that gets deflected out for a corner. And then that subsequent corner finds Driussi's head, but goes just over the opposite corner of the goal. But then off that goal kick, SKC <sighs> trying to play it out of the back. Austin, again, pressing high in that 4-4-2. Tim Melia pings it right to Danny Pereira at the top of the box. He slides it onto Obreon, who's crashing on his right. And Obi slots it home inside the near post to tie the match. Birthday goal. That's right. Love to see it. The the first birthday goal. Yeah, um, yeah no, that was that was uh, a, another just a great way to respond. And you saw a lot of a lot of dudes, even JoJo, we're talking about here, where he's makes a nice progressive pass that kind of changes the field. Dudes really settling into their roles, understanding what they're supposed to be doing within the formation that we're playing in, and um, that is just going to keep paying dividends for us. And way to have your head up there, Danny. Find find the birthday boy and. I, he, I feel like an underrated finish. I feel like there was a sure, bit of sure, congestion yeah, yeah. there, some traffic, and for him to be able to slot that near post past Milia, who is now recovered, um, I thought was was a bit underrated in, in regard to that goal. Yeah, I think that's fair. 34th minute here. Austin really taking control of the game yep. at this point. Kolmanich plays Wolf through down the left. Wolf finds the feet of Rubio near the six-yard box, and Diego turns on that ball, but it does go right to Milia three minutes later. Obreon gets free down the left, and then he floats a ball towards the back post where Diego Rubio is waiting. And then Tim Melia gets two or three fingertips to this ball to save what was a sure goal mm -hmm. if he doesn't, because uh, mm -hmm. Diego's there all alone. Two minutes later, great long ball from midfield to the right of the area. And that was Johan to Danny. And, and Pepe dances here on Basong uh, and kind of Rodney Redis style, right? But then actually gets a, a pass, a meaningful pass off because Danny finds Obi in the middle of the box. And then Hodder takes a touch around the nearest defender. And then he slots home the birthday brace for the lead. And uh, man, the vibes are all the way turned around now. Oh, yeah. Now we're really partying. And I remember I turned, looked over to you after we got scored on after uh, the goal gets pulled back as well. And I was like, man, this might be a, a three beer half to try to get through this <laughs> here. And then it turned into a three happy beer half. Um, again, I think another <laughs> underrated finish by Obi, yeah. like left footed. Like this yeah. was another solid goal in some traffic. And um, we, we, we've we joked and talked about his battle with his first touches and everything like that. But he's been winning those battles more often than not lately. And this yeah. was this ball had some pace on it. So just it must be sweet to score on your birthday like that that's fucking awesome. oh yeah yeah I mean, little... ultimately the man of the match you know banging the drum down there in the yep. south end after the final whistle um fantastic night for for hot air um not too much uh between then and the half in, in terms of notable plays um a lot of the skc attack 
uh, their shot attempts. Like you mentioned to me that you heard on the broadcast watching the replay today that SKC uh, is the team with the most shots outside of the penalty area. And you saw that play out last night, right? 10 of their 16 shots come from outside the box. And that matches up with exactly what we're trying to do on defense. So again, a lot of those attempts, just not super threatening, but Mm -hmm. at halftime, I will shout out second episode in a row. Shout out to Jesse because Jesse sends us that awesome message prior to Thursday's episode and then shows up in 123 with some beers at the half, man. That was great, Jesse. Great to meet you. Uh, Shout out. Um, It's like, this is, you know, this is what it's all about. We, you know, we, we have our little podcast where we're totally invested in all of this stuff and to be able to like make those connections with random people who we otherwise never would have met. And now we both have this thing that we are just so impassioned about and like ready to be you know out, out there all the time while at these games having <laughs> yeah. fun with the highs with the lows i i just uh i really appreciate it i don't know if i can put it into you know a very eloquent uh little <laughs> statement here but thank you so much jesse those uh those beers were drank swiftly yeah they, they were tasty when you're up to one uh and then i think i downed the rest of that beer in the 46 because stuver Plays a long ball here that skips off uh, an SKC player's noggin at midfield and towards their own net where Jassy Zardes, who had subbed on at the half, he and Leo came on for Rubio and Julio. So Julio, you know, on the yellow, getting him off. I totally get it. Um, But here Zardes runs onto it. He runs past Fontas to open space for a cross. And then Seba floats under this cross pops a headed attempt back towards where it came from and then nestles it in the top corner, 35 seconds into the second half, uh, Austin up three, one beers gone and uh, impressive bit of skill there from number 10. I mean, that was, that was sweet. I, I mean, it's just another, why is he like this moment? Like why, yeah, yeah. like why <laughs> the, is the he, daily, yeah. why is he able to do the computations in the air with the trajectory of this ball and be able to understand (laughs) that I don't need to put any sort of pace on this. I just need to let it bounce off the front of my head and it's going to find the back of the net and go pick it out, Melia, because just stunning. I don't want to overlook the G play either because this is two weeks in a row. We've seen this man gas somebody up the sidelines, right? uh, What year is it? Pretty impressive. Um, So uh, 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 just, you know, you come out of that second half and earlier in this season, we, we did have some very solid responses, uh, you know, right out of the gates in the second half of games. And this was just a tone setter and ultimately the game winner um, that, that, that we see through to the end here. Uh, just man, you know, Owen doesn't show up on the stat sheet. He's got no assist here. He's got, he doesn't have the goals or anything like mm-hmm. that, but his work rate and the amount of places I saw this dude on the field throughout yep. the course of this game was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and there's a great article out on the Chronicle by Eric Goodman. And if you're uh, wondering about Owen Wolf and why <laughs> he actually plays, highly recommend going and reading that. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, just watching the games. Uh... <laughs> yeah, if you need further context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 61st minute here. Um, SKC, um, predictably, the more aggressive team since that third goal. Went into the back of the net. Austin content to sit back and counter and let their their solid defense do its work. They do so here, uh, SKC, after winning a ball, uh, or Austin, rather, winning a ball. Seba fires it long from left to right for Hader Obreon and another brilliant first touch here by him. I don't know how difficult that is, but again, anytime that long ball is coming to Hader, we're kind of, you hold your breath for a second. Mm-hmm. Um but he touches it down right to a streaking Danny. Fast break is on, and and Danny progresses it to the edge of the area. Plays a very solid through ball here to Jassy Zardes, who gets in behind down the left, but his shot goes off the post, and then it almost bounces off Melia's back and yeah. back in, but ultimately into the field of play. Fontas plays it or deflects it right into the the arms of Melia. And man, if again, just another moment last night where they could have blown the doors off of this game. Uh, And it just, there wasn't quite, Austin had plenty of luck in this one, especially Mm -hmm. late on. Um, But uh, no luck here. Yeah. You know, uh, would have been a spectacular goal. Just would have been fantastic to see as well. And, um, you know, again, this team is just finding 
different kind of ways to generate looks here. Like you mentioned, SKC is now out of their defensive shell. They are pushing up. They have to try to get something going on the offensive side of the ball. And now, boom, we're hitting you on the counter, like which is yeah. not something we're particularly known for. But again, this verticality that ho that hot air adds to this team, just it, it has really unlocked a lot of things for us on the offensive side of the ball. And it's wonderful to see Danny up there again. Just, I mean, I just spoke on uh, Owen's work rate and the amount of places I saw him on the field. Same goes for Danny. He was all over there last night, and it was just, it was a sight to behold. I, I could have watched him just do that all night long. It was awesome. Yep. I'm with you. Then 63rd minute here, SKC back on the attack, and Jake Davis finds some space from about 25 yards out, winds up, banger. Yep. World class shot there. Uh, I don't think there's anything Bradley Scott Stuver can do to keep this one out. Um, wasn't three, a keeper two? in the world could save that. Yeah, or, you know what I mean. Like that ball, like yeah. as Brad dives, that ball was already past him. I mean, on yeah. the announce, on the announcers be like, "Well, that's the best strike he'll ever have in his entire <laughs> career." Yeah. yeah, um, and that's probably pretty accurate. I don't want to take too much away from him because that was just incredible. It was a yeah. it was fantastic individual uh performance and display right there. What was it? Point zero three xg yeah, point zero from that attempt. You know, so. Hey, uh, hats off to him. It was a great shot. Yep. They do get a double sub here, SKC. Willie Agata, and uh, he comes in for Polito, and then Janice comes in for Shallowy. Um, I thought Polito so was like, I, Yeah, I don't like to see Willie Agata come on fresh no. when we no. just got scored on, and now everybody's getting a little bit more tight, at least in the stands. Um, but to pull off the, the raw talent there with Polito and Shallowy um, – wasn't as worried as as I potentially could have been if they went more uh, or less like for like their 65th minute than we do get Ethan Finley, the return of Ethan Finley uh, from the hamstring injury in for Hotter Obreon, who, again, Hotter Obreon given us very solid 60-minute shifts here in all three games the last week. Um, great to see. I, I think that this is the perfect amount of time for him with the amount of effort and exertion that he has to let loose on some of these straight line runs. This is where we yeah. want you just in that peak form where it's just like, we'll get 60 minutes out of your running hard. And then we have some options to get you out of the game here. So mm -hmm. great to see Ethan back. Yep. 69th minute here, Austin on the counter again, Ethan Finley with space down the right. He puts in a cross that finds the head of Owen Wolf, who was crashing the net. But he sends it over everything, and it looked like he might have caught a slight cramp there, uh, crashing the net. And so, uh, again, another opportunity that Austin had in front of goal yep. uh, that they weren't able to capitalize on. Um, 70th minute, another Austin counter. The ball yep. at Ethan Finley's feet here. And he cuts across Fontes, and there's contact right on the edge of the box. No call. And then uh, 20,738 people all chanting together, ref, you suck. And uh, man, it was loud in there. Uh, you do get a yellow card to Jean Kolmanich for dissent here. And then Owen Ring does come in for the cramping Owen Wolf, which pushed Danny out to the left wing. So a couple of things to discuss there, but yeah. your thoughts on that passage? Um, that uh, I'm just still kind of just hung up on the sub pushing Danny out to the left here. I, I am a bit perplexed by that. Also, a very large fire truck went by and kind of took my attention there. So, um, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll let you give your thoughts on the passage of play there. Sure. I mean, I think it's definitely a foul on the edge of the box, uh, by Fontes on Ethan Finley. Yes. Not in the penalty area. So not a reviewable play, I believe from, the video assistant referee. Um, but again, it's just another one of those times where Austin could have set up for a very dangerous attempt there right. if the correct call was made. Um, I once again, don't think that the officiating was all that great last night. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough to say it was when you get an entire sold out Q2 stadium chanting ref, you suck. Uh, I think multiple occasions. Um but I also don't think the officiating had a bearing on the outcome of the game. Uh, I mean, could have been worse for SKC. For sure, 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 sure. But yeah. um, ultimately, no, it was not. It was not an impacting. It did not impact the final score. Yeah. Well, and then we get we get Alex Ring in for Owen Wolf, right? Which pushes Danny out to the wing. Um, I thought he did fine out there. As did I. Uh, yeah. Again, he's just maturity. 
growth, yep. being yep. able to take on new roles, being able to accept new challenges, has his best performance at that dual 10 spot that we've ever seen out of him. And then to get shifted out there, just, I mean, you can't say enough about the dude right now. I think I DM'd him hammered last night. It was just like, yo, you're fucking balling right now, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 80th no, minute. No, no response yet. <laughs> <laughs> 80th minute. Uh, Danny, again here, takes it off Johnny Russell near the back. Takes off just him and the keeper. Tim Melia saves it. That rebound, though, bounces to Jossie Zardes. Melia saves that shot again. And then that rebound falls to Driussi. And Melia is now charging out at Driussi after making those first two deflected saves. Seba takes a touch around him, takes the contact, goes down, penalty given, and then ends up getting saved mm. by Tim Melia. Uh, they did check to see if Tim Melia was off his line. I think it looked he like was. there was a case for that, uh, but not given. So it remains 3-2, and you see a free foot come in for Johnny Russell. But I also saw a lot of people blaming Landon <laughs> for talking about how Seva has never missed a PK. Um, and the thing I was saying to you last night, too, is he has missed a PK. It was just mm -hmm. in a friendly. Uh, yeah. I think against Atlas, I don't remember which team, one of the Liga MX teams from two years ago. But, yeah, their backup keeper saved a uh, Drew C. Penn there. But, yeah, first MLS uh, PK miss from Seva. And I don't feel any different about him than I did before. No, uh, he's still going to come not. up there and knock down 90% of them. Absolutely. Um, he was off his line early. Right? It wasn't by much, but he did. He did he jump. It, I mean, he was. And, I mean, the, the announcing crew even went out of their way to talk about how he's great on PKs. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe that's part of it where he's just getting off that line ever so slightly, getting that bit of advantage. Um, so, you know, we press on. Yeah. In 86 minute hedges does come in for Seba. Uh, so you go mm. three center backs there, five at the back, uh, you know, parking that bus for the final 10 minutes or so. 88th minute yellow card to Fontas for taking out Ethan Finley, who had beaten him once again down that sideline, just, just tripped him up on the counter. Then they give a yellow to Danny here for simulation in the box in the 89th. And like, I guess. He went down really, really easily trying to draw a pen. Um, but I also, it wasn't just, it wasn't the most egregious thing uh, that no. I've ever seen in terms of a flop, but maybe a flop fine coming for him in the midweek. Ah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else better be paying that. Uh, uh, pay, maybe Tony. 90th minute here, yellow card for Valencia after up it, he upended Eric Tommy about 12 yards outside the box and, yeah, the Punisher, right? You get hit with the Punisher sometimes. But I don't know if that woke Tommy up or anything here because first minute of stoppage, and I believe there was five given or six, I think six, six. given again, right? Six. First minute of stoppage off a Kansas corner. Ball is headed up into the air by Austin, falls to the edge of the box, right to the foot of Eric Tommy, who takes a crack and pings a shot off the underside of the crossbar and out. Uh, and again, this is – again luck on Austin's side. Yeah, that was a, a very fortunate placement of the uh, crossbar there. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, that was a great strike. Caught everyone kind of sleeping with how he took that, and um, very fortunate. We were very yeah. fortunate there. Fourth minute of stoppage here, yellow card uh, to Radia for descent after the combination of Jassy Zardes and Alex Ring have held possession for four straight minutes, E. The Insane. clock was at 90.56 when uh, Austin won the goal kick after that Tommy shot, and they don't give possession back until 94.55 on the clock after a flurry of corners and throw-ins, one by Ring and Zardes with a little two-man game over there in the northeast corner. Um, I think we were joking, you know. <laughs> Who says Jossie ain't earning that million dollar salary this year? <laughs> just kept five minutes of possession. You you bleed eighty percent of the stoppage time just between these two guys. It was incredibly impressive. Uh, you know, it's just some veteran veteran play there. Two guys who have been around for a long time. You know, just being able to kill some clock, and we needed it because after that Tommy shot, it it was definitely feeling a little. We we're at that point where it's just like, man, we can't 
we can't only get one point from this game right now. So um, just it, it was it was it was fun, man. We were having a good time because they were right there in front of us and everything. G's poking the ball off off yeah. different Kansas State defenders. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to foul him and everything. It was the best. It was the best uh, effort in that regard that I've seen. Um, yeah. In regard to killing clock like that. Yeah, I'm with you. So Austin, final whistle blows, three two victory, back to back home wins in the span of four days. Forty three percent possession for Austin. Uh, again, it was more even uh, when the game was in the balance. Obviously, you go up two goals with a half hour or forty five minutes to go. SKC is going to have a little bit more of the ball there in the second half. SKC mm-hmm. also had the advantage advantage in terms of shot attempts, seventeen to twelve. But when you look on target, seven to three in favor of Austin. Austin E, six big chances. Wild. Missed five of them. But our six, did we double our big chance count in one game? Like, right. I, don't, I don't remember having more than two in any other game, I feel like. It's like when we had 20 shots in Dallas, and that's more than and yeah. the entirety of the season on the road. Just yeah. six <laughs> big chances here. And like you talked about, some of them were some unfortunate bounces that didn't just go our way or could have gone our way. But uh, again, just being able to generate these types of looks, these types of opportunities in different ways and different styles is is very encouraging. Seven corners to five in favor of the good guys. And then on Fat Mob's model, 2.39 XG for Austin, one flat for SKC and then the expected goals on target metric 2.99 for Austin 0.96 SKC. Um, So in terms of the stats, a dominant victory here for Austin. Um, And again, I think a deserved three points once again, and the fifth straight home win that sets a new club record. Um, Again, I'm, 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 I'm not saying the F word yet. When it comes to Q2 Stadium. Okay. But it feels good. Foundry? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Not a fortress, but a foundry. I, I mean, I don't know, man. You know, we, we heard that that uh, take earlier in the season from the coaching staff and everything, and mm-hmm. it was a bit difficult to take in and, and accept when we started out so poorly um, with some challenging results as well. But at this point, man, five-game win streak, like we said last week, man, come on in here. Let's put it down and let's just go play and like let's see yep. what happens because this team just has it has a ton of confidence right now. They believe in what they're doing. They believe in one another. Again, I pointed out earlier, guys really settling into their roles, understanding their job, and excelling in that position. So, just another fantastic, fantastic win for this team. And um, I love this team, man. I I really yep. do. Yeah, I love this club. Awesome. Still, still just as fun to root for as they were a few months ago. Um, couple quotes here from Coach Wolf. Uh, reading this off, Verde all day, Phil West Substack. Go subscribe to Phil. Uh, he said, to me, it's protect the legend, talking about the TIFO. It's protect the legend, protect the house. It's a place that they have helped build, build talking about the fans, right? And they help make it sacred. And this is five in a row for us at home. That's a pretty good run for our group, and we've got it on the board. Some goals and objectives for this year. So these guys are adamant about it. But anytime the fans can give us a boost, and we mentioned this will be the most challenging game of the week. So the fans show up as always. The supporter section killed it again, and hopefully our guys prove that they're up for anything uh, that they can find out at this point. They've done a great job here. Then he went on to say, I think there's great resiliency in this group. There's real character now and personality that is shining through. There's no panic when things don't go our way. We're at Dallas. Our best our best player gives the ball away. and And so what? Like it happens. You mm-hmm. know how many times he's bailed us out. The guys just pick up and get moving on. Um, and I think that's an accurate assessment of how this team, again, like we said a half hour ago, the mental state of this team is so much stronger than last year's. It's it's night and day. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, it's it's a it's a culmination of things. It's 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 some roto aspect, it's some changes and adjustments that the coaching staff has been able to make. Uh, putting guys in the right positions to be able to do things, guys stepping out of their comfort zone, being able to perform when they're not in their their regular position. You see Owen Wolf, how he moved them all over the field. You see Danny last night being able in that dual 10, shifting out to the left wing. Like we have found ways, and this team really believes and buys in 
I know I think that we spoke about it a little bit last night after the game where it's like, still don't expect this team to win any sort of cup or trophy this year. Like that is not the expectation that I have, but as you start to move forward, looking at developing this team more. So I'll, I'll, we'll get into the roster sheets here, the cap sheets, how this could be moving forward, looking at it. You have a core of guys now who it's like, you can bring in some talent around that. And it's like, this is how we play. This is who we are. We have an identity infuse the talent. And now you're really talking some serious business. So third place right now, I will absolutely take that. Uh, Primo, man, I don't, I don't know why you were so down on this team, though. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Let's let's take a look at the table. You mentioned Austin FC in third place in the West, and you you love to see it. I think the second hottest team in the league over the last nine games, uh, right? It's nineteen points from their last nine. I know RSL has been slightly better with their results over that same sample size, but. Nine games is getting close, mm -hmm. getting close to a third of a season sample size. Um, it's again, it's very encouraging. And we're now, I think, 10 games away, regular season games away from that summer transfer window opening. Um, so I I mean, I don't know, man. I haven't gone back and done the historical uh data here over the last three or four seasons on where that nine seed ends up or mm -hmm. i know over the full season it's i think it's between like 43 and 45 uh traditionally over the last few years in this league or in the west um but like when you get how many points do you need 24 games in yeah right to, to be, be on pace. pace it can't be much more than 30 32 nope. and we're sitting on 22 right now so it's like again banking the points here early in the season has been so key to the goal of making the playoffs. Um, and again, yep. I imagine, I hope that those guys are continuing to stay consistent. As we've seen them say, we're not getting outside of ourselves. Our goal is to still make the playoffs. And just like you can win two games in a four-day span and rock it up the table to the top three in the conference, yep. um, you can go on a cold streak next week with another day, double game week, three games in eight days, two of them on the road this time. And you can find yourself back down seventh, eighth, ninth very quickly. Um, but that's not where we are right now. So I'm going to take this week and celebrate being in the top three of the conference because uh, for now, we're fucking back, baby. Let's go, man. You know, it, I I don't expect complacency to set in with this team. That's not something that I am like uh, seeing any sort of you know ind indication that that's happening right now. Obviously, we accomplished nothing right now yeah. up until this point in time but you're on that line you're where you need to be and like you said you can have some cold streaks here but you've given yourself the insurance the leeway to be able to survive that if it does come which it very well could this is a mm -hmm. a, a very evenly matched kind of league there's tons of teams in this western conference who are very dangerous very talented teams so i want the dudes to just be able to enjoy this briefly hard earned uh, six points here over the last three matches in, in regard to two rivalry games, the short week, the double games. So, like, just very hard-earned. Take a little bit of a load off, come back, reset, make sure the mindset is good. But, again, I don't expect complacency to set in with this team. We know who we are, and we know we mm -hmm. can't get complacent. We don't have the switch, the proverbial switch that you can flip on when you're an ultra-talented team. So, stay the course, boys. It's been fun. Yep, absolutely. As, as Mooch stirs in the background part of the north end here copa tejas update right because we did have uh houston and dallas playing out in h-town last night they end up playing to a draw which e sets up july 17th in frisco is now winner take all uh and also draw means austin wins so win or draw on july 17th uh means austin fc will Three feet, the Copa Tejas. And wow. uh, what better time to go and get our first win in Frisco than July 17th? Um, I think we got to go, man. I was just thinking, man, it smells like it smells like a road trip right now because yep. uh, that's special. And uh, we're all in on this season. And, um, you know, it's 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 been awesome. And to be able to secure a potential third straight Copa Tejas is just it's it's awesome, particularly how shitty last year was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else for you on this match before we put it in the rear view? 
Yeah. Uh, there's nothing I could say that would summarize how awesome this team has been and just <laughs> how much fun it's been to watch them and cheer for them. So yep, I'll shut up. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the cap sheets. So flipping mm. over here on the YouTube. And again, you can go to the North End podcast.com, click on cap sheets and view all of the things we have here. We of course have the roster slots all listed out together with notes on the roster designations and how they relate to the salary cap. We have the cap sheet with some notes on what the MLS PA uh, or what these numbers that the PA puts out mean. We have our year by year depth chart with cap hits included. And then we've got, of course, the tab with just cap and free agency cliff notes uh, from the collective bargaining agreement. And then if you're an FC to fan, you've also got, a contract spreadsheet there for Austin FC too. But E, a lot to digest here. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's very small on the screen right now, so I'm going to try to pump that up just a little bit. And like, I don't really know a better way to go through this than just kind of going down the list. But there's one topic that I mentioned to you earlier today before we started recording that has me scratching my head a little bit. And yeah. that is the guaranteed compensation number for a handful of guys going up significantly and the way that the players association words guaranteed compensation and how that is calculated just doesn't drive to me with what is going on here with some of these contracts because from the players association salary guide it says the annual average guaranteed compensation which is just uh, uh, presented as guaranteed comp in that uh in that salary table and you see it here on our sheet as well it says that number includes a player's base salary and all signing and guaranteed bonuses annualized over the term of a player's contract including option years so let me start with jassy zardis here who went from eight hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars in terms of his guaranteed compensation the only thing i can think of here is that these are non-guaranteed triggers, performance-based triggers, whether it's minutes played, game started, goals scored, I don't know, farts in the locker room, something, something is making these numbers go up that just doesn't match with what the Players Association says. So am I surprised if they're just not being, they don't have a good enough explanation or fully transparent? Of course not. It's MLS. No. Um but I think it's probably because it's some of those, the, it's language in the contracts that are not guaranteed incentives, but are hit by some of these guys to make their contracts go up in such a drastic manner. <laughs> An extra 200K on Jesse Zardes. Yeah. Not nothing. No, that is, that is substantial regarding, you know, the actual figures on these, on these guys' salaries and everything like that. Um, I know we were getting ready for salary cap Christmas for a long time here. And this was a, uh, wasn't the best gift we've ever received. I will say that with all these yeah. dudes jump, not all these dudes, but significant jumps for some of these players. Um, yeah. And yeah, you, you could break it down much better than I could. I also can't figure it out and I'm just going to chalk it up to MLS being MLS right now. And hopefully this is something <laughs> that gets repaired, revamped as we move into a new iteration of the league, a new era. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's a couple guys, right? Like um, Leo Weissenden. Mm -hmm. I don't believe his number moved at all. Emiliano Rigoni, I don't believe his number moved at all. And like thinking, okay, maybe that's just a DP thing. I don't know. Seba went up. Uh, it looked like a, a substantial amount. Um, okay, so some of the new numbers that we have here um, for, for the, the new players, rather. Um, Diego Rubio, his base salary, 350K, was accurately reported by Jeff Carlisle, but that guaranteed compensation number, 390K. Um, and I still feel just as good about that being a 10 out of 10 signing to this point. Um, Absolutely. Hotter Obreon guaranteed comp number, 537K, um, which to my understanding, because we got him in the re-entry draft and there was no press release signing, saying that Hotter signed a new contract, um, I believe this means that, again, it's those hidden incentives, yep. whatever it was. Um, so again, head scratching there a little bit, but just over half a mil there for hotter. Um, 
We did get Ethan Finley, right? He signed that new contract, the one plus one in the off season. Um, That's down, I, right? Oh, it's yes, it's it's. I think he was four twenty five, four fifty. Oh, four twenty five. It's some somewhere in there. Uh, nice. Three hundred six k now for Ethan Finley, mm -hmm. uh, which you love to see. And then uh, Guillermo Biru, two hundred k flat. Stephen Cleveland, two twenty five. And uh, Brendan Hines Ike. I know a lot has been made about this number because it's one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars nine hundred and ninety two. And I saw many people wondering. We can't give him an extra eight dollars, get him up to 200k. Uh, but yeah, a, a, another again, the way that Roto is structuring this roster build with guys on free transfers, which is something that is not transparent because the like if you look at our total cap space available number here, mm -hmm. that's just an estimate because we don't know the amortized transfer fees that count against the salary cap for guys like Johan Valencia guys like Leo Weissenden, right? That's why we know from the uh, roster sheets that the league put out two weeks ago, we know that Valencia is a TAM player, right? So his uh, actual cap hit with that transfer fee, amortized transfer fee included, is above 683K. Um, so there's still stuff that we don't know, but our, our best estimate right now without those numbers, right around 1.6 million in cap space. And again, I imagine the majority of that 1.6 is taken up by uh, fees that are not included uh, yeah. in terms of the the frontward facing information available to us. Yes, I agree. And I guess I'll put you on the spot here a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, we've been talking about the feast of Roto, the Roto feast and all that good, good stuff. It's just, do we stay put a little bit here? You know, like with the way the team's performing, and the fact that we're going to have some dudes coming off the books at the end of the season, like, I guess it comes down to, do you expect Tony to open up that wallet and be like, okay, let's start using some of these buyouts here, start buying some people down, do the TAM stuff that we need to do and see what we can do. But just with the way the team's been performing, like, do you think that that seems reasonable? I think we're going after DP level players, at least one here in the summer, which again would require at least that Tam buy down of Alex ring, um, you know, or mm -hmm. you can completely buy out Emiliano Rigoni, who I don't think we mentioned during the game. Cause he was an unused sub, yeah. um, you know, and it's not like he went full 90, the other games, right. I, I don't think so. Um, the other two games this week. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I could it just be Dessler and DP. Sure. Um, I'm not surprised if they bring in another piece or two in addition to that, but I'm still expecting the DP level player because of the emphasis that Rodolfo Burrell has placed on the summer window. And like when we had uh, Tom Bogard on again a couple weeks back, he mentioned, you know, those European based sporting directors love to attack the summer window because they think that is where you can get the best players possible. Um, so Maybe that maybe the ceiling of the feast is coming down, but I think that Anthony Precourt and the ownership group are going to give Roto the freedom to operate again under the cap. But I think if Roto brings a plan to them and says, I just need you to sign off on this, this is what I want to do. Boom, boom, boom. Here's what's going on. I don't see why they wouldn't, because again, we imagined he invested pretty heavily to get Burrell mm -hmm. over here, right? Mm -hmm. From Man City. Um, so why you wouldn't let him do the plan that he's, he's trying to, to execute here. Um, again, I understand if we're not going to spend 4 million buying out Ragonians artists this summer, yeah. I get that. But in, in terms of spending on a new DP, if we have the flexibility with the roster and cap mechanisms to, to open up a DP spot, I don't see why he wouldn't because all of his arrows, he has been pointing us towards the summer True. for some more enticing signings um and again but then to your point right you go over to our sheet here with the year by year cap hits and these of course separated out by position um now that we have all of those numbers for next year again not including these apparently non-guaranteed incentives that are in some of these contracts you've got a little less than four and a half million committed next year and that's not including the Kolmanich number because he signed that new deal so we don't know what that extension mm -hmm. number is going to be 
But if you flip over once again to the salary cap and free agency cliff notes, you can see the CBA written out year by year up there and know that in 2025, your total budget with allocation money and cap space is over $11 million. So again, 2024, we've got around four and a half million committed. So there is a lot of flexibility coming up in the winter window. So even if they don't reshuffle the deck here, so to speak, in a significant manner in the summer, it is these two windows. Um, I still very much expect February 2025 to be feeling like we have a roster that can compete, not necessarily win, but compete for trophies across the the full season. Um, anything else for you here on the cap information? Do you want to talk about uh, Bersano? Yeah, I mean, well, so we, we learned two weeks ago, right, that he was on uh, – the supplemental roster. And he is another guy who did get a salary increase from last year. Um, Mm. I'm not sure. Again, when I talk about farts in the locker room, like I don't know what else Matt Bersano could have done incentive wise in his contract when he didn't play a minute for us. Um, So that's why I I make that silly reference when I did. Um, But yeah, 157 five in terms of his guaranteed comp number. I assume there's a rule that we don't, again, that is just not transparent to the fans in a, in a frontward facing manner that you can use allocation money to buy a guy down uh, who's under a certain number down to that, uh, you know, veteran minimum cap hit and include him on the supplemental. But it's another head scratching piece of these rules that, again, nobody has an answer for. Well, I'm just over here fantasizing about bringing in a DP level winger and then being able to see this team with that. Yeah. And- yeah. Ooh. And with Dessler out there, you know, I, again, oh. Dessler uh, played his final match for Toulouse this morning on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of love from him, uh, from the Toulouse fans online, from the club's accounts. Um, so, again, they are not taking his departure lightly. Uh, it seems like this is a player that is well-beloved there at Toulouse and uh, one that they are going to hate to lose. Oh, 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 look oh, at that. Oh, oh, oh. I, I might get you a little uh, salary bump there from the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we welcome you with open arms, uh, Mr. Dessler. Can't wait for you to get here. Yep, indeed. Um, so I guess that that pretty much does it here. Again, northendpodcast.com. You can see all this information. Hopefully, enough of the cliff notes on here to answer any questions you may have that we don't have for ourselves already that we talked here talked about here, but definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us on any of our various platforms with any questions um, or improvements. Or if you see something wrong with the sheets, you think there's something we could be charting here, definitely let us know. Um, Mm. Anything else for you before we move on to last business day? No, sir. Let's do it. All right. Well, before we get to last business day, just real quick. The best keeper in the world. (laughs) Damian Loss back in action late night on Saturday, taking on Las Vegas Lights FC. Val Noel, Coach Sanchez, Joe Hafferty makes an appearance in this one. It ends up as a 2-2 draw. And that first goal scored by Las Vegas, Valentin Noel scoring on Damian Loss. I assume he's had a couple reps of that, (laughs) you know, in the last year. Um, First goal, though, uh, for Val, not on Damian uh, kind of a turnover at the back there, but then second goal, not Damien's best uh, best high, best play there that he'll put on film, but ultimately Louisville comes back. I thought Louisville, uh, from what I saw again on the highlights and statistics, Louisville the better team on the night. That's certainly what the standings point to, uh, but taking one point home, I'm sure they're slightly disappointed, but uh, did bring home a result. So, uh, you know, you like to see it from Damien continuing to get starts. Hopefully he is in the 11 for the next match. Yep. I mean, road results, man. I'm, uh, I'm assuming it's, it's tra- translates all over the world on, uh, you know, no matter yeah. what league you're in, you got to find ways to get points on the road. So, um, and also happy to see Val score, of course. Yeah, for sure. And he can, I continues to lead Las Vegas, I believe right. in goal score in goal contributions. We do have the sell on percentage. So just in case, you know, run it up brother. <laughs> yeah. Run it up. Austin FC2 taking on SKC2 in the Scared Money Don't Make Money Derby Friday night at the pitch. And we did have 
what was for me an eyebrow raising change in the 11, I believe all 10 field players the same week over week here, but in net Aaron Cervantes gets his first start for FC Doe. Marcus all stripped to the bench alongside Ariano Wolf, Louis Jean, Spadafora, De Anda, and Miller. Uh, so you do get Wolf and Miller added to this bench now that we're back at home, but still not a full team for FC Cito. Um, What's your thoughts on the Cervantes start here? Outside of the the performance, we can talk about that in a second. But what do you think that's just like a rotation mm. where it's like, hey, we're going to give Aaron a shot here? Or do you think this is performance based? I, I really can't couldn't tell you. I mean, like we said, I, we felt like Alstrup had responded to some difficult uh, situations at the beginning of this season and that he actually has been m- quite fine in his role back there for the FC, FC Toe boys and the keeper. Um, I really don't know. You know, like we've seen some interesting substitutions here from Utley, uh, some interesting uh, starting lineups. Uh, no Sebas often. Um, yeah. You get this switch here uh, again. I, I keep harping on it. I keep coming back to it. Just an identity thing, trying to find out, you know, what this team's best 11 actually looks like. And um, that goes to goalkeeper as well. So I'm going to go ahead and assume it's not anything like disciplinary or, or rotational wise. And it, it was performance based. Like, you know, Cervantes could be putting in some really good shifts in practice, really turn some heads. And, um, you know, if he gets an opportunity and I think he did, he, he, he did fine here. Yeah. Yeah. I was definitely, not unimpressed by mm. Aaron Cervantes in his first outing here. Does give up the first goal, 19th minute. I thought, and I missed the first half, so my first half knowledge of this one was from the highlights. Mm. Um, but the buildup here, very, very solid, good team goal by SKC2 here. Um, and I don't think there's a ton of, of keepers that are keeping this one out of the net. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I thought here, credit to the offense. I mean, like we talked about when we broke this team down earlier, they have some good, they have some stout, the talented players over there. Like they, they yeah. are, they got some good, good boys over there. So, you know, yeah, man, I, I'm still just trying to wrap my head around it because I, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't. Unless the change at the back. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. We just, we've just never seen it. Yeah. I, First yeah. or second team. Yeah. Right. Um. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get some more clarity on that as the season progresses here. Yeah. Well, 33rd minute, uh, Pino does get the ball, gets a little loose there towards the right center of net, um, and then he kind of plays a pass, pulls it back across his body, and that finds Jimmy, and Jimmy unleashes a shot. Um, I've seen him connect, I feel like, so many more times with just more full force and like a more dangerous threat, but this one trickles to the left of the keeper and into the net and will absolutely take it, and uh, Jimmy... Very fired up, running up to the fans there on the south end of the Parmer Field stands. Um, so 1-1 one, one going into the half, and you love to see Jimmy score it, and you love to see him and Sebastian combining up top, right? True. Um, you, yeah. That you, you need that, especially with CJ out of there, you need that connection to continue to, to blossom. That's an excellent point because obviously our two most talented offensive players uh, in those two guys, and they've needed some time to get acclimated to one another. Jimmy has a very particular style of play that you have to account for and adjust for. He's very aggressive. Uh, You know, he's trying to make runs into the net and it's just good to see him finish this one here. 52nd minute, uh, first of two penalty calls in favor of the visitors. Uh, This one ends up going off the post. I I thought for a second that maybe Cervantes had gotten a hand to it. I don't think he does in this instant, but ball stays out of the back of the net and we stay level. But then jumping ahead to the 81st minute, the second PK called. um, This foul was questionable to me, not in the sense that I thought it was like outrageous, but I feel like I've heard explanations in the past. Um, about when a guy is going away from net in the box mm. and goes down easily that some that like I guess the one that stands out to me is Fagundes Western Conference final gets stepped on clearly on the mm-hmm. replay and they even reviewed it and because he was going away from the goal they don't they don't give him the the call um Habi Bull I believe was the one who was brought down here who was again uh, we knew coming in, that's one of the three guys we mentioned, I think, on Thursday's episode, and he was a terror all night. Not going completely away from goal, 
but not mm -hmm. going towards it. Um, either way, penalty given, and they do convert this one. So it feels like we're going to let it slip away here late. Um, but then 80, 88th minute, some brilliant individual play here by Alonso Ramirez, the captain, and he mm. blasts the equalizer into the back oh. of the net uh, with two minutes left in, in regulation. Um, and we ultimately go to, to a PK shootout. And that's where Austin buries all five of their attempts. Aaron Cervantes, he saves Pau Vidal's shot. And Pau Vidal is a big fuck, man. He yeah. is huge. He's big. Um, and uh, hey, Cervantes gets the stop, gets the penalty shootout win. That is FCTO's first shootout win on the season, I believe, in three tries. Um, yeah. And we'll take the two points at home. And the uh, celebration that ensued after was was pretty fun as well. That was great. That's like the second or third screamer that Alonzo's had this year that has just yeah. been like really impressive to see and just kind of eye-opening when he just uncorks that one. Yeah. Um, and like to your point about these PK situations, you know, we struggled. It wasn't just Allstrup in some of these situations with the PK stuff. Like we we were not performing in regard to the guys going up there, putting it on yeah. the spot and being able to put it in the back of the net. So that's great to see. Again, some resiliency. That's how you start to build some identity, start to build some continuity. And, you know, with those with the with the PK win in particular at, at Cervantes, man, that 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 bodes well for you if you're trying to get that Absolutely. starting job. Yeah, I don't disagree there um, with just how this he, league breaks down, you know, and it's yeah. like you get to that point where a PK and you can get the two points. It's just it's really important to have a keeper back there who's going to be able to give you a chance in these situations. So. Kudos to the boys, man. Way to respond. Come back 88th minute like that after giving up two PKs. Yeah. Just really impressive. Did see uh, Chris Garcia on the broadcast. Not dressed out, but he's in Austin. Uh, so <laughs> there's there's one of them. Uh, <laughs> the rainy and then, guy got him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, uh, the money gun afterwards. So one of the fans got the little money gun for the scared money derby and Hands it down. Coach Utley fires off a little a little cash into the air. Sal was having fun with it. And then there was a couple signs as well from some Austin fans. And, man, shout out to Coach Fellhaber on the other side. Mm -hmm. Super good sport. He signed the one that had his face on it. That's that's great. That's I mean, great, you know, yeah. If you say something like that and you go and you lose, you got to be able to take it on the chin. So I, I definitely salute him for that. That's yeah. That's fun. Man, Sal's been, Sal's been so good all year, though. Yep. He's, yeah, he's good, been man. solid. He's he's a good player. I, I like watching him go. So Austin FC two uh, currently, as we've got three matches going on as we're recording on Sunday evening. Three matches active right now in the West live table. Austin FC two sitting on ten points in tenth place through eight matches played. Again, have a game in hand on the majority of the Western Conference, and they are back in action this Friday against LAFC two at the pitch. There we go. Very fun. All righty. Anything else for you for you before we get out of here on episode one forty four? Not much, man. Just what a what a week. Just awesome. Just had a great time. So yep, I thank, agree. Thanks, y'all, for putting me into a wonderful mood. Yep. <laughs> and guess <laughs> what? We do it all again next week because another double game week coming up uh, Saturday, taking on the Earthquakes on the road. Ross and FC has never earned a point so again trying to check off another uh you know item on that list of goals for the team this season i'm sure getting a result in san jose is one of them and we'll be back on wednesday to preview that match to preview fc toes match against lafc2 and of course the nonsense and talk about everything else that happens in the austin fc universe between now and then enjoy the beginning of your week everybody we will do the same as fans of the third place team in the Western Conference. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Until then, he's E and I'm Zach. Vamos Austin FC, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>